It is time for my three year keto update, so stay tuned. Everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lydia. If you're new here, I have been on this keto weight loss journey of mine for three years and I'm on my mission to lose weight, get healthier, live a better life. If you've been following along, thank you so much for joining the journey. If you've not subscribed already, make sure to hit that subscribe button now so you can finally see me hit my goals, which hopefully will be coming soon. So let's talk about that. Like I said, I started keto journey three years ago at my heaviest weight. My weight was 265 pounds. I was a size 22, 24. I was very uncomfortable in my own body. I was miserable. Um, I couldn't I couldn't sit, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't stand. I was just, I was, it was in a state of misery and I didn't know if there was a way to get myself out of it. I had been struggling with weight uh, and food issues ever since I was little, probably started around 10 years old, 11 years old or so, and started to slowly gain weight and struggled and fought that my entire adolescence. Of course, went away to college. If you saw my other video, I believe where I gave you my story, my journey, I will link it somewhere. Uh, but I go into detail about what that experience was like for me and how I even got to 265 pounds. But this video, we're not going to dwell in that past. We are going to talk about the immediate past and what this three year journey has been looking like. Now, my first year, man, I was golden. I was in a rhythm. I was proving to myself that I could do this, which in turn made me want to even start this YouTube channel because now I didn't feel like I was gonna fail in front of all of you. Uh, I felt like I was now having some kind of value to share. Like, oh, I think I've got this. I think I know what I'm doing. Let me share it, you know, now that I'm still early on in my journey and see me reach my goals. And that first year, I was really, really focused, really committed, did not allow any off keto days or cheat days, as you know, and I think I was on it for almost a year when I started this channel. So in that first year of my keto journey, I ended that first year at 196.2. So that was a loss of 68.8 pounds my first year on keto. Now, if you've watched any of my update videos, like my one year, my two year, and I go month by month to show you what each loss was. Again, I will link it somewhere or you can search the video playlist to see exactly how much I lost month one, month two, and so forth. But the gist, the summary is I lost 68.8 pounds my first year with this keto low carb lifestyle of mine. Year two, I was still continu continuing on my journey but it was a little bit harder because as you get closer to your goals the weight seems to take longer to come off so I struggled a little bit but I did end my second year on keto at 177.8 which was an additional loss of 18.4 pounds right so my first two years of keto I'm rocking and rolling. I have yet to have a cheat moment or an off keto day or a planned day. If I did accidentally eat something that was not low carb or keto friendly, it was completely on accident where I mindlessly kept the bun on my burger or something like that. Um, but it wasn't anything that was planned or intentional that was solely for the purpose of taking an off day or getting off plan. So for two years, I was golden and I got down to 177.8. Then year number three has happened. Oh, all right, so correction. I went back to look at my numbers and exactly see how I did this last 12 months from year two to year three of keto so I can kind of see the dips. I started off with my two year ketoversary. Anniversary was 178.2. Ah, to be in the 170s again. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so that month I was at 178.2. Then in August, the following month, it was 176.6. Then in September, it was 175.0. Then October was 172.8. Then November was 170.4. And then in December, it was 173.6. So that's when the holidays started and that's where it started to veer off and change a little bit. So after the holidays, I weighed in in my regular monthly day that I weigh in and it was 180.8. So I'd gained a few pounds over the holiday and I wanted to lose it the fall that month. So in February, I went down to 177.6. Then March, by the time I weighed in in March, we had already gone on our one week cruise for spring break. And that's where it all changed. <laughs> Everything's changed. That's when I decided to get off of keto the entire time while we took this one week vacation. Not just one day, not just one meal. I literally took seven days off to have the standard American diet. And that's what has thrown a monkey wrench in my entire progress. So the numbers as of spring break we've got 180.4 march then in april 183.8 may 185.8 june 187.4 and now july we're at 190 Point four. So the trend, as you can see, is literally every month after that March, well, after the holidays, had been creeping up even just two or three pounds, but it's literally every month two to three pounds, two to three pounds. And that's how weight gain is, right? It's like we don't even realize it. We don't feel like we're doing anything different. We don't feel like our body has changed. And then all of a sudden we wake up and we are 20 pounds heavier than we last remembered. So that is a lesson and testament for those of you on this weight loss journey. It just creeps on two, two pounds, three pounds. And it's evident as of March, you know, with the two pounds here, three pounds here, I am now up 20 pounds from my absolute lowest. Now I'm using my absolute lowest because I was right there. I was 168.8. I was just a couple of pounds away from hitting that 100 lost, uh, 100 pounds lost mark, and then it started to slip away. And I didn't feel like it slipped away that much, just a few pounds. And then I went back to like the mid 70s, 170s, and it still felt within reach. Not, oh, maybe if I just, you know, not eat the low carb tortillas this weekend, I'll probably get back there. And then it just slipped away and slipped away and got further and further and further away. And here I am sitting at 190, wishing I was back in the 170s just so I can get closer to that goal. So I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, one one of the things that I did realize in this past 12 months of an experience is, you know, I didn't start incorporating those off keto days until when did I do that? I want to say um, September or October. And it was a good thing because when I incorporated that one day to kind of shake things up, I was very, getting very frustrated because my weight had been stalled. I had been stuck at 175, 177 for the longest time. I couldn't really, it felt like that, couldn't really get off that, those two pounds. I felt like I was gaining and losing the same pounds and I couldn't push myself to get to newer goals. And then I was getting frustrated and stale and tired and somebody had recommended that I take an off day to shake up my system and I was like, does that really work? I was really, really, really nervous about doing that because in two years, I had not had an off keto day. I had not had a moment to indulge in anything, not planned, like I said. So, I took the day, I took the day and usually what we do when we take that day during that time was I had sushi. So we went to a sushi buffet type of place and ate all the sushi that we wanted, shook up my system, got right back, had literally one meal, got right back on the very next meal and carried on business as usual. And then I saw a loss on the scale. I think I lost like three pounds that month. We're like, what? I'm gonna do that again this month. And I did it again the following month and I lost another almost three pounds. So I was like, okay, so there is some truth to this. Having this one meal off monthly, it's getting me to places. And that's kind of how I got down to the 168.8. Now, mind you, that's one meal, one month, 
that's it. And here I go on spring break going, well, let me just take the week off and the rest is history. So yes, I've learned a lesson. Obviously you can have an off day, just don't have them often and don't have them seven days in a row because then you are developing a new habit. Because honestly, I had cleaned out my system from the sugar. I had wiped it out. You know, it gotten clean guys. I had kicked my sugar addiction and it was no longer something I needed. And then the brain started going and going, well, maybe you don't need it, but maybe you want it once in a while. Maybe you want to be able to partake. Don't you want to feel normal like everybody else? Now, mind you, if you stop and look around at everybody else, they're all struggling with being overweight. You know, a lot of people who indulge and, and think that way, unless they have these genetics and are able to control themselves, but like other people who have had food issues and binge issues and sugar addictions their entire life, it's not so easy. So obviously I allowed myself to nosedive into sugar and carbs for an entire week, which then made it way more difficult to kick the habit again, because then I found myself struggling since March. I've been doing low carb during the week and on the weekend, psh, let me have whatever I want, chips, guess so. You know what, it started off with just chips at a Mexican restaurant and low carb beer on the weekends. Once in a while, it wasn't such a big deal. And then it was like full on, I'm just off this weekend. I'll start again Monday. And then it was that horrible diet mentality that I've had my entire life of being good Monday through Friday, being bad on the weekends, starting again all over on Monday for a fresh start. Now, obviously, if you eat a high fat, low carb diet Monday through Friday, then eat a high carb, high sugar, high fat diet on the weekends, it's not going to balance itself out. You know, your, your body is going to hold on to everything you're eating on that weekend and make it a lot more difficult for you to get it out of your system. So, Obviously, as you guys have seen the past couple of videos, my turning point, I feel, is right now after going to the KetoCon. Thank you, KetoCon. Uh, it really gave me the focus, the energy, like I've said, the excitement to tackle this journey again. I was in a tailspin, literally in a tailspin since March, trying to find anything to grasp onto to stop the spin. And I thought I had it a couple of times since then, but then, you know, it was evident that I have it as with the slow weight gain over the course of the month. So anyway, where we are, you know, I could wallow in that I have gained weight. I think from year two to year three, it's a plus of 12.6, which is very frustrating because you think, oh, not only did you erase all that work, <laughs> you know, you've set yourself back almost to the point of year one. So that is frustrating. But instead of wallowing in that can be seen as failure, I'm going to focus on where I am today versus where I started. So to remind myself was at 265 pounds. So today at 190, that is a loss of 75 pounds. So we're gonna focus on the positive. <laughs> we are 75 pounds lost than what I used to be. I am able to go for walks. I can sleep better. I fit in clothes that are much smaller than I never thought I would be able to fit into. I think I'm teetering between a 12 and a 14 right now. When I was at the 170 mark, I was closer to fitting into a size 10 and I was starting to see that single digit holy land of a size eight one day. Um, but you know, as I regressed, I'm back between a 12 and a 14, which again is progress from where I started at a size 22, 24. Um, even my feet lost weight. I used to be an eight and a half in shoes and now I'm between like a seven and a half and an eight, usually a comfortable eight. Um, so that was interesting. Definitely a lot of things have changed for me. I definitely have more energy, um, more confidence. I smile more. I take pictures. The girl at 265 pounds ran away from the camera, never took photos, not even at birthday parties. Or if I did, I would cringe. I would hide. I would untag. I was the untag queen. If you put a picture up that I did not 
you know, give you the thumbs up for and tagged me in it, <laughs> I would untag. So uh, there are, you know, many times where I've untagged photos and not been part of those memories anymore <clears throat> as far as Facebook land goes or, any, or anything, uh, just because I didn't like the way I looked. So now I'm able to take pictures. I have a little bit more pride and confidence than I did, or a lot more than I did when I started this journey day one. Would I do it again? In a heartbeat, yes, my life has changed. So yes, I would start keto all over again. What I would tell myself then, that the now me talking would say, is just stay the course and that rhythm. Don't be afraid of that rhythm and that groove that you're in. Don't let your head get you off track and think that your way of, of living a, a ketogenic lifestyle, low carb lifestyle, is not unnormal and, and sometimes we talk ourselves into doing really, really, really off things. And that's what I've talked myself is other people are having cake. They're living a normal life. Why can't I do it? They're going to a restaurant ordering whatever they want. Why can't I? And then when I do it, I feel like crap. So that's my answer. <laughs> Original me, old me, that's my answer is, you know, you know how you feel when you eat that crap. So don't eat that crap. One day off here or there, is not a bad thing five days off seven days off in a row having a habit of it is so if you cannot control that one day and make it legitimately one day that month then just don't do it at all that's the other piece of advice i'd give myself who's just now starting off that journey you know it's funny because you, everyone always says take pictures take pictures take pictures i did take pictures in the beginning i was very consistent in showing you know my my measurements and my progress and of course as it slowly started to creep up the last thing i wanted to do was take pictures the last thing i wanted to do was measure myself so uh i, I do need to get better about measuring myself uh and taking more pictures as this journey continues because uh, just as much as you want to document it going down if it's going up go ahead and document it because you've got to fix these problems right like if you've got to break the cycle if you seem to be in this rabbit wheel this cycle you've got to stop it and the only way to do that is to kind of document it journaling writing the food down um, tracking my weights and measurements all of that has been a very plus big plus on this three-year journey of mine so another thing i've learned is i'm not finished yet obviously but even if i hit some arbitrary number on the scale i'm still not finished yet i think i feel working on your health your fitness is a lifetime gig it's something that you do daily it's a choice that you make daily so as much as i'd like my body to shrink and get to a certain size or i'd like to see a number on a scale and feel like oh that's victory it's going to be something as i've learned these past three years the maintenance man is the real battle is how to keep it how to can be consistent and this is an everyday choice that you have to make so that is it for today guys thank you so much for staying and listening to my story if you've been on a weight loss journey i'd love to hear how long you've been on it if you are on keto or low carb lifestyle post in the comments below how long you've been living this lifestyle i'd love to hear about it and i will see you in the next one